Hey, Tim, how are you doing? I'm well. Uh, curious, how disappointed were you when uh, you found out Rashad got pulled off of 205? I was pretty, uh, I was a pouty little poopy poodle. <laughs> you know, I was, I, was, I was pretty bummed out. You know, I wanted to fight at Madison Square Garden. I wanted to fight against Rashad. I wanted to fight on UFC 205. I wanted to be on that card. Um, I did everything I possibly could to be on that card. You know, we saw Jocker Ray with there. He, he weighed in. Yeah. Uh, was he offered to you at all? No. No, I asked for him. Really? And, and I'm not a matchmaker. Do you know if they offered it to him? I don't know. No. I mean, I was be I was begging, I was pleading. I, I asked to fight Kelvin there. Um, you know, he, he was weighing in at 183 um, or 186, and I think there was like four or five middleweights. There was a couple of even light heavyweights. There was a welterweight. There was um, a heavyweight, Brock Lesnar, uh, that I called out. I mean, I was I was trying for anything and everything. Obviously, Madison's regard was like a yeah. show. That, yeah. Uh, what did you think of uh, Calvin not making weight? I mean, it's disappointing. You know, this is a professional sport. We're professional athletes. Um, there's only a couple things we have to do. You know, we have to get on the scale, make weight, and then we have to go fight um, and fight fair. Of course. That's it. You know, if you mess up a couple of pretty basic, easy things, then... Yeah, no, other industries, you, you wouldn't have a job if you missed one of those basic things. Yeah, yeah, and any of the companies that we work for, you know, like, you got like one thing to do, you know, maybe two. It'd be like if I showed up without a camera today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you need that. Well, kind of do. Um, obviously, you're confident he'll make weight uh, tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> um, where do you think, uh, where do you find him to be most dangerous? Oh my God, he's good everywhere. His striking's powerful, he's fast, he's young, he's athletic, he's durable. Um, his wrestling's great, his defense good, his, his double legs good. Um, linear strikes, and his one two is fast as a southpaw, he's great footwork. You know, I, he's, a, he, he, ever, he's an ever evolving, developing fighter, and he's young. You know, he's young and dangerous and hungry, and he has something to prove in this fight, uh, maybe to keep a job. So, you know, like, he's dangerous. Well, he's ranked number five at welterweight. You know, and let me tell you, the difference between welterweight and middleweight is not much. You know, the, uh, so, it's, it's, it's a tough fight. For sure, it, it is. Uh, you know, and we, we didn't see you for a little while. I'm curious, is that because of your Hunting for Hitler show? Or what, what was the reasons that we, you know, we, didn't see, we haven't seen you in the Um, I like fighting. Uh, it by far is nowhere near, not even in like the top 10 most important things in my life. Um, nor is it financially, on business-wise, um, in that top 10. So, yeah, like when, when I fight my business partners that are like right here, you know, the board member of my nonprofit, which is right there, uh, don't like it. You know, it takes time away. I've been in a three and a half month training camp. That is me not contributing, not helping, not being a, not being the father that I should be, not being the husband I should be, not being the business partner I should be. You know, um, and on the military side, you know, like my bosses aren't happy. You know, like I got supposed to be back in work for the past month, which I haven't been. Um, TV shows, multiple TV shows, you know, like, I got a lot to do, and uh, I just like fighting. Now, I saw a uh, uh, interview that you did with our, part, our network partner, uh, MMA Weekly, and you're talking about the security measures you have to go through, and you're, yeah. uh, you're getting an FBI to assign you security details because you are on the hit list. I mean, can you just talk about that for a minute? I mean, it, it's, how, how, do you, how do you deal with that in your family, and you're just used to it? Yeah? Don't try to kill me. No, and very, very, very bad for you. You know, like, I, I, uh, I'm a special forces sniper, a ranger qualified Green Beret that has been special operations for 15 years. Combat deployments in every single combat area on the planet right now. Like, name it, I've been there. Um, war on terror, war on drugs, human trafficking, anti-poaching. Like, if you like, what, 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 is, what has Tim done? Um, I live in Central Texas. I live in pretty much a fortress. You know, I, I own a defensive tactics company that trains people how to be the hardest person somebody ever tries to kill. Like, it is almost idiotic. I mean, it's just another example of like the lack. 
just the pathetic impotentness of who these people are and how clueless they really are. You know, like they're always going to be trying to kill women, children, and babies, unarmed gay guys at bars, or people running a marathon. Like that's who they are. They're not going to come after me. And if they do, they're dead. They can send whoever they want. They're going to die. There's not going to get anybody back. That's just now. How do I prepare for that? Like, come to one of my courses and I'll show you. You know, or come to my house and let me show you the defensive structure that that thing is. Um, it is by design every single element. So this is my life. I chose it. My wife, um, unfortunately, is is on board till the end. So this is just how it is. I, I guess you know, the real question I have is, is: Does Tim Kennedy ever get a time to relax, or are you always looking over your shoulder? Time to relax. Um, I'm always looking over my shoulder, but I can relax when I do that. You know? Can I can sit at dinner with my back to the with, to the wall with a gun on my lap and really enjoy a fantastic meal? Like that's normal to me, and I'm completely and totally relaxed. Everyone has a different normal, and that's yours. Yeah. And you know, a lot has happened in 2016. Can you just point out the probably the highlight of 2016 for you? Was it the uh, MMA Athletics Association or something else? Man, I almost have to break down the categories. Television-wise, um, on like episode six or seven of Hunting Hitler on History, I was in a particular place for about a month, and it was one of the most scary experiences of my life. And we start revealing what happened at that place. I can't obviously, you know, like give anything, but I mean, that just. In the places that I've been, and the things that I've done, to still now at this point of my life come to some place and just in complete utter disbelief that this is still exactly existing and happening. Um, when do you think that'll air? So I think episode five airs this Tuesday. So six, seven, maybe three weeks, two weeks. Something, something for everyone to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, the Mixed Martial Arts Association. Uh, Athletes, man, we need help. So knowing and seeing the momentum and seeing the support and seeing this come to fruition and real and like the there's nothing worse than unrealized potential and the potential that the sport has, the potential that um, these athletes have. You know, it's unrealized right now. But I really believe in two or three years from now, with this association. We're going to turn a corner, and you're going to see everything get better. Everything. Now, you know, I know the five of you are board members for the association. Uh, Bjorn is uh, simply an advisor. Can you just talk about, choose, did, did he choose you, or did you choose him? Because, you know, Dana and you know, Bjorn haven't had the best relationship yeah. over the years. I'm just curious, if, of all the people that could be an advisor or, or that you would associate, obviously that's not going to make you know, Dana happy. Yeah. Can you just talk about how he was chosen or became part of it? Yeah, so the, the board members exclusively, completely have all power. We can hire and fire whoever. We can, the only things that can pass, the only bills that can be pushed forward, the only discussions that can move forward, the only movement by lawyers can be done by, is chosen by the board members. The board members are fighters. All right, right now it's George St. Pierre, Kane Velasquez, Cowboy, uh, TJ, and myself. Um, that is how it is. Um, Bjorn, his perspective as a promoter was completely needed. It was necessary. You know, like, um, we couldn't, we can't move forward without knowledge. Knowledge is power. And the perspective from a promoter, having made deals with, um, you know, digital content partners, different broadcasters, different sponsors, you know, different venues, different unions. Like, he's done it. He's manipulated. He's screwed fighters. Um, and maybe there's a little chip on his shoulder, a little regret, a little remorse, and he's trying to compensate, make up. I don't care if he has that or he doesn't. You know, he says he does. People speculate that he does. I don't care. I just need his information. Uh, and so does the board. I don't know that. Kane doesn't know that. TJ doesn't know that. So there's only, there's only a couple. I mean, really, wait, what are my options? Right? There's he's like in a very unique situation where he's not currently promoting, but he has in the past. Makes sense. So you, you take all the knowledge he gives you, filter what you want to keep, mm -hmm. and do what's best. And do what's best for the fighters. 
not not for anyone else. He's not paid. He he gives us information, and we do with it what we will. And just today, I've been asking everyone about the association and what their thoughts are. So far, everyone's you know they they, they like it. Have you contacted other people in the room? Man, um, everybody in this room has a fight on Saturday night, to include myself. Um, and I hope that their priority is is very securely focused on that. So I've I've not brought it up, mentioned it to a single person. Um, this is, if, they, if they bring it up, I'll talk to them for a moment. But then ultimately, at the end of you know the initial discussion, let's let's talk let's talk next week. You know after we both get a big W. All right, well, good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thanks.